I, I'm such a junkie for college football. It is, it's my number one, the history of the game, everything else. I've had this mindset all season long of, I'll just take what I can get. I really will. I'll just take what I can get. Um, I wanted to start with what's going on with the upcoming battle in the semis between Clemson and Ohio State and the fact that you had Dabo Sweeney list Ohio State as number 11 on his coach's vote in the poll, and he based it on the fact that anyone that played less than nine games would not be in his top ten. Was that gamesmanship? What, what did you make? Or, or is it a valid point that he makes in ranking teams that played as many as 12 games against teams that played eight or less? First, thanks so much for having me on, guys. I really love talking ball. And I wrote about this at FoxSports.com because this is such an interesting story. He claimed that it had nothing to do with Ohio State being the opponent. He said if it was USC, Penn State, Michigan, whomever, he wouldn't care. He wanted to rank teams that had played nine games or more inside the top ten and then say, okay, who's best that's left? What I found to be really interesting about that is not so much that he ranked Ohio State number 11, it's that he ranked Coastal Carolina number 10, and he ranked Cincinnati inside of his top 10. Those are two group of five teams that I think if they were matched up against his Clemson Tigers in a college football playoff semifinal, he wouldn't do anything but grin. And then there's this really interesting quote that he gave in September when he was asked point blank, do you think that the Big Ten champ should stand a chance of getting an invitation to the college football playoff if they start late and don't play as many games. And he said, shoot, yeah. I mean, in this season, not unlike what you believe, any football we get in is good football, and they play great football in the Big Ten. They got great coaches and great players. Something between September and December changed for Dabo Sweeney. Now, we are in college football. We're based on opinion polls. That's why this matters so much. It's also why I'm going to use this as just another instance for me saying, expand the playoff, cowards. Let's get this going. Let's end this. Because we're here talking about Dabo Sweeney ranking his opponent 11th instead of really talking about how good the Sugar Bowl matchup is going to be while Clemson has never lost to Ohio State. RJ, let's move over to that other game. This Brian Kelly thing is fascinating, him saying, you know, there's nothing to prove for the Fighting Irish. I kind of feel like there is. How do you see this game going, and is there something to prove for him and his team? Well, hell yes, there's something to prove for him and his team. They got boat raced the last time they played Alabama in a national championship setting. This is what that is for them, and they're 0-6 in New Year's Bowls. He says that we're here every year, so we don't know where this comes from. But you know what? I'll give him this. A while ago, we had a term for Clemson that ended in S-I-N-G, Clemsoning, right? You would find a way to lose dramatically or not show up in these big games where we expected you to be good, and then roundabout Deshaun Watson, roundabout Taj Boyd, uh, really announcing itself over the dead body of Oklahoma in the Russell Athletic Bowl in 2014, we get this version of Clemson. Now, I don't think that Notre Dame is going to beat Alabama, and really we're talking about margin of victory for perhaps the greatest offensive Alabama team that we've ever seen. But he does have a point in that, yeah, we're right here. But are you right here because you're good or you're in that Oklahoma spot of just being the team that is fourth because that fourth spot traditionally has not made a difference when you're talking about taking on number one. That said, Alabama's trying to be the first team in the college football playoff era to run this thing wire to wire as the number one all the way through. I picked them way back in January before the pandemic occurred. I have no reason, even in a pandemic, to change my mind on that. But I would like to see a competitive football game just because this 1-4 matchup has not been what we want it to be in the last few years. RJ Young, National College Football Reporter at uh, College Football on Fox. And, of course, we will have the uh, Rose Bowl game for you. Quite interesting. It will be played in Texas, which is, which is a shame. Uh, it seems like the college football playoff system, to me, started to get to where it needed to be. RJ, has this pandemic set it back in any way with some of the things that you've talked about and things that people said that certain teams shouldn't be there and should be there? I don't think that it has set us back. It has forced us to ask even more questions of this 14 playoff format. I'm not a fan of it. I haven't been a fan of uh, the BCS. I wasn't a fan of the Bowl Alliance when we had it. I want to see an undisputed national champion. The way that I couch this is the NCAA 
knows how hard it is to pick a national champion. So they designate 11 selectors of FBS national champions that range from mathematic polls to human opinion polls. Like, for instance, the West Collie Matrix, for at one point had Coastal Carolina at number one. Or what we all agree on as the college football playoff ranking as being the one that we all refer to as being good. I don't want that to happen anymore. I want to get rid of NCAA selectors. I want the scoreboard to be the selector. It's not to say that a Coastal Carolina or a Cincinnati can win a national championship. It is to say everybody deserves an opportunity. And the way that we love the NCAA tournament, I believe, is the way that we could love a college football playoff the FCS plays 24 teams. Roundabout Texas, where they got to play the Rose Bowl this year, you could see kids playing high school football playoffs for two straight months. It's not that big a deal, except for whatever reason when we talk about playing college football. They're going to have 16 teams in a 32-team league playing the playoffs in the NFL. I want to see those games played in college football, not because we're going to see Northern Iowa, to use the NCAA as an example here, go to win a national championship. It is going to be uh, because we get to see Ali Farouk Manesh hit a game winner and have a great game. And that's what we remember. We don't remember that Northern Iowa lost. We remember that we all learned how to pronounce this kid's name because he gave us something to root for. And that is the reason we watch the games. It's the plays themselves. It's the players themselves. And I hate the idea of telling a kid that he does not deserve a chance to play for a national championship because he didn't go to the right friggin' school. You know, RJ, I'm with you on this, and from a fan standpoint, I'm with you. But I've, I've, I've covered a lot of Final Fours over the years. I've talked to a lot of college football coaches over the years. Here's the, the, the two-sided coin. You have college basketball with March Madness that every fan in America loves. You know who doesn't love it? Coaches. Because you could have a fabulous season, and you have one off day, and that's all they remember. They're like, wow, you won out in the second round. Yeah, we've we won 30 games this year. We won the conference championship. We won our conference tournament. Yeah, you got second round. On the other side, you get these college football coaches, and you got 40 bowl games. Everyone's hosting a trophy. You're finishing the season on a winning note. I mean, that's the argument both ways. I'm with you. This college football playoff is a farce. It's a made-for-TV deal. Uh, ESPN, look, they're investing a lot of money in it. I get it. That's why they're doing what they're doing. They're fully invested in the SEC and the ACC. And it's the reason that Alabama or Clemson pretty much wins a championship every year. And the Big Ten and the Pac-12 especially are just left out in the cold. But the only way to have a true playoff is you've got five Power Five conferences, and each of them has a conference championship game. You don't need a committee. Whoever wins the conference championship game is in. You add one team from the group of five, you have a 16 playoff. And every one of them will have earned their way in. First two teams get by, you play it out, uh, and that's the fairest thing. But, I mean, what, what about the whole side about how college basketball is meaningless except what you do in a tournament? Could that be the same fate if you had an expanded playoff for college football? There were... Three teams that finished undefeated this season inside the group of five. You want to make sure that two of those undefeated teams don't get a chance to play for national championships. So that is not a meritocracy. That is quite literally an oligarchy. I don't like oligarchies. And as for the coaches that say, hey, we won 30 games and we lose one, that's what the money's for. All right? That, that's what your job. Your job is to win or lose. Our job is to consume the product. Now, the same NCAA current tournament coaches that want to get mad about losing games in that tournament, also don't want to turn down the $1 billion the NCAA generates from that tournament being broadcast on television. Now, when you talk about growing the inventory for college football, it's very much the same thing, where, yeah, we don't need this many bowls. We can have home and homes. We can have a one versus 16 matchup. We can have this thing be for the fans. And that's what I'm here for. I want to see USC get an opportunity to play San Diego State in a playoff setting for something that 100% matters. And the one time that the Aztecs pull off the upset, we're all going to remember it. I also take a look at it from this standpoint. What am I going to tell my kids? All right? Like, there are 11,000 FBS players every year. You want to tell me that only, what, 600 of them deserve an opportunity to play for a championship? Nah, they all practice. 
They all work hard. And if they have a magic season like Central Florida did a couple of years ago or like Cincinnati might have right now or like San Jose State is having, that deserves a national audience. That deserves all of our eyeballs on it. And we all get to sit there and talk about it. I don't want to live in a world where we're picking and choosing who plays for national titles. I want the kids and the scoreboard to do that for us. Oh, Jay, great one. Oh, yeah, really good. Very passionate. We'll see. I mean, eventually changes do happen, but they're a little bit slow as far as college football is concerned. Great stuff, RJ. We appreciate the time. Thanks so much. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, fellas. I appreciate it. It's fun talking ball.